Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts for AWS Reinforced 22. I'm John Furrier, your host with Dave Vellante, co-host of theCUBE. We've got Trey Rons, and CTO and founder of Sequence Security. CUBE alumni, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So when we chatted, you were part of the startup showcase. You guys are doing great. Congratulations on your business success. I mean, you guys got a good product in a hot market. Yeah. Uh, you're here. Before we get into it, I want to get your perspective on the keynote and the talk tracks here and the, and, the, and the show, but for the folks that don't know you guys, explain what you guys, take a minute to explain what you guys do and, and key product. Yeah, so uh, we are in the unified API protection place. Uh, but I mean, a lot of people don't know what unified API protection is, but before I get into that, just, just talking about sequence, we've been around uh, since 2014, um, but we're protecting close to six billion API transactions every day. Uh, we are protecting close to two billion customer accounts, uh, more than two trillion dollars in customer assets, and 100 million plus uh, uh, sort of data points that we look at across customer base. So that's that's who we are. I mean, of course, we all know APIs is link, uh, is the basis of cloud computing. And you got successful companies like Stripe, for instance. You know, you put an API and you got a financial gateway. Billions of transactions. What's the learnings? And now we're in a mode now where single point of failure is a problem. You got more automation, you got more reasoning coming. A lot more computer science, next gen ML AI there too. More connections, no perimeter, yeah. right? Yeah. More and more use cases, more in the cloud. Yeah. So uh, what, what we're seeing today is, I mean, from six years ago to now when we started, right? Like the monolith apps are breaking down into microservices, right? What effectively what that means is like every of the every such microservice is talking APIs. And right? so what used to be a few million uh, web applications have now become billions of uh, uh, APIs that are communicating with each other. I mean, if you look at the, I mean, you spoke about IoT earlier. <laughs> I, I call, I call, uh, like a Tesla is an application on four wheels that is communicating to its cloud over API. So everything is APIs today. 80% traffic on the internet is API. Now that's data in transit right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Yeah. Fully encrypted too. Yeah, yeah well, hopefully. Maybe, maybe, hopefully. maybe, we don't know yet. No, but seriously, the, everything is talking to an API. Yes. Every application. Yeah. And, and, and there is no single choke point, right? Like you spoke about it, like everybody, is hosting their application in, in the cloud environments of their choice, yep. AWS being one of them, but it's not the only one, right? The, the, your APIs are uh, hosted behind a CDN, your APIs are hosted uh, uh, on behind an API gateway, behind a load balancer, ingress controllers, there is no single So what's the point. problem? What's the problem now that you're solving? Because one was probably, I can imagine, connecting people, connecting yeah. the APIs. Now you've got more operational data, yeah. potential security hacks, more well, surface area. What's the? What's, yeah. What are you facing? Well, I, I can spoke, speak about some of the uh, some of the well-known um, uh, sort of exploits that have been uh, well publicized. Everybody gets exploited, but I mean, uh, some of the well-known. Uh, if you if you heard about Expedient last year, there was a third-party API that was exposing uh, your your credit scores without proper authentication, like Facebook had a Bola vulnerability some time ago where people could actually edit somebody else's uh, videos online. Uh, Peloton, again, a, a well-known one. So, like, everybody is exposed, yeah. right? But that is the, the end result, all right? But it all starts with, people don't even know where their APIs are, and then you have to secure it all the way. So, I mean, ultimately, uh, APIs are prone to uh, business logic attacks, fraud, and that's what ultimate, uh, what what you need to go ahead and protect. So is that the first question is, okay, what APIs do I need to protect? I got to take a API portfolio inventory, is that? Yeah, so I think the starting point is uh, where, where are my APIs? Right? So they, we spoke about there's no single choke point, right? So APIs could be in, in your cloud environment, APIs could be behind your cloud front, yeah. like we are here at uh, Reinforce today, so APIs could be behind your uh, AKS, uh, ingress controllers, API gateways, and it's not limited to AWS alone, right? So, so knowing the unknown 
is, is the number one problem. So how do I find them? I, I asked Fred, hey, where are API? <laughs> no, you must have some automated tooling to help me. Yeah, so, so uh, I, I, Sequence provides um, an option without any integration, what we call it the API Spider, where it's like, we give you visibility into our, your entire API attack surface so without any integration into any of these services. Where are your APIs? What's your API attack surface about? And then sort of more details around that as well. But that is the number one. Is that agentless or is that an agent? There's no agent. So that means you can just sign up on our portal and, and then, then fire it away. And within a few uh, minutes to an hour, we'll give you complete visibility into where your API is. So is it a full audit or is it more of a discovery? Or so, both? So number one, it's, it's discovery, but we are, we are also uncovering some of the um, potential vulnerabilities through zero knowledge, right? <laughs> so uh, so <laughs> we've, we've seen a, a ton of Log4j exposed servers still. Like, like recently there was an article that Log4j is going to be endemic, that it's going to be here uh, <laughs> for, 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 for a long time. Where's your mask on that one? Yeah. That's the COVID of, of, yeah. of security. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so you need to know where your assets are, what are they exposing, so, so that is the first step, effectively, discovering your attack surface. Yeah. I'm sure it's an efficiency issue too with developers. The, having the spider allows you to at least see what's connecting yeah. out there versus having a meeting and going through code reviews, yeah. right? Is that another big part of it? So or it, is, no? it is actually the last step but you, have, you actually go through a journey. So, so effectively, uh, once you're discovering your assets, you actually need to catalog it, right? So, yeah. so I know where they're hosted, but what are developers actually rolling out, uh, right? So they are updating your, uh, the API endpoints on a daily basis, if not hourly basis. They have their CI, yes, CD pipelines dev, running. DevOps. <laughs> Welcome exactly. to DevOps. We, it's ex actually why we do it. Yeah. And, and people have actually in the past created manual um, uh, ways to catalog their APIs and that doesn't really work in this new world. Humans are terrible <laughs> at manual catalogization. Exactly, so, so cataloging is really the next step uh, for them. So you have tools for that, that automate that, using math, presumably. Exactly, to, and yep. then we can, we can integrate with all these different choke points that we spoke about, uh, there's no single choke point. So in any cloud or any on-prem environment where we actually uh, integrate and give you that catalog of your APIs, and that becomes your sec second step, really. Yeah. Okay, well, so, so what's the third step? There's a third step and then com which is compliance? Compliance is, is the next one. So basically, catalog. There's four steps. There's I, actually I, six, so I'll, I'll okay. go. So discover, <laughs> catalog, and then compliance. Yeah, compliance yeah. is the next one. So compliance is all about, okay, I've cataloged them, but what are they really exposing, right? So, uh, there could be PII information, yeah. there could be credit card information, health information, so, so I will treat every API differently based on the information that they're actually exposing. So that gives you a risk assessment, essentially. Exactly. Right. Okay. So, so you, can, you can then start looking into, okay, I might have a few thousand API endpoints, like where do I prioritize? So based on the risk exposure associated with it, then I can start my journey of protecting. So that's, that's the remediation, that's fixing it. Okay, then. keep going. So that's, what's four? four. That was that so one, fix that, it. Four, yeah. four is the risk assessment? So no. number four is detecting abuse. Okay. So, so now that I know my APIs, and each API is exposing uh, different business logic. So based on the business you are in, you might have login endpoints. You might have new account creation endpoints. You might have things around uh, uh, shopping, right? So uh, pricing information all exposed through APIs. So every business, has a business logic that they end up exposing, and then the bad guys are abusing them in terms of scraping pricing information. It could be competitors scraping pricing. They will be doing account takeover. So, so detecting abuse is the fourth step, right? Mm -hmm. The fifth one is about preventing that, because just getting visibility into abuse is not enough. I should be able to, to detect and prevent natively on the platform, mm -hmm. because if you send signals to third party platforms like your VAPs, it's already too late and it's too coarse grain to be able to take act on it. And the last step is around what you actually spoke about developers, right? Like, yeah. can I shift security yeah. towards the left? But it's not about shifting left, uh, it's just about shifting left. You Obviously you want to bring in security to your CI, CD yeah. pipelines, to your developers, uh, so that you have a full spectrum um, of API security. Sure, runs. Dave and I were talking earlier about like how cloud operations yeah. needs to look the same. Yeah. On cloud, premise, and edge. 
Yes, and absolutely. Edge is a wild card, because it's, yeah. it's growing really fast, it's changing. How do you do that, because APIs will be everywhere. Yeah. How are you guys going to rein that in? What's, what's the customer's um, journey with you as they need to architect? Not just deploy, but how do you engage with the customer who says, I have my environment, I'm on the AWS, I'm going to be on-premise and Edge, I'll use some other clouds too, but I got to have an operating environment yeah. that's pure cloud. So, so we need, like, like you said, right, we, we live in a heterogeneous environment, right? Like, uh, effectively, you have different, you have your Edge in, diff, in your CDN, your API gateways, uh, so you need a unified view because every, uh, every uh, gateway will have a different protection place and you can't deal with five or 15 different tools uh, across your various different environments. So you, what we provide is a unified view, number one, and the unified way to protect those applications. So think of it like you have a data plane that is sprinkled around wherever your edges and gateways and ingress controllers are, mm -hmm. and you have a central brains to actually manage it uh, in one place in a unified I, way. I, I have a computer science or computer architecture question for you guys. So Steven Schmidt again said single controls or binary states will fail. Obviously he's talking from a security standpoint. But I remember the days where you wanted a single point of control for recovery. You talked about microservices. So what's the philosophy today from a recovery standpoint? Not necessarily security, but recovery, like something goes wrong. Yeah. If I don't have a single point of con control, how do I ensure consistency? So do I, do I recover at the microservice level? What's the philosophy today? Yeah, so the, the philosophy really is, and it's, it's very much driven by your developers and how you want to roll out applications. So number one is applications will be more rapidly develop, developed and rolled out than in, in the past. What that means is you have to empower your developers to use any cloud and serverless environments of their choice, and it will be distributed. So there's not going to be a single choke point. What you want is an ability to integrate into that life cycle uh, and centrally manage that. So there is going to, not going to be a single choke point, but there is going to be a single control plane to manage them all. Right? So, okay. so you want that unified, unified visibility and protection uh, in place to, to be able to protect these. So things. there's your single point of control. What about the company? You're in Series C, you've raised, I think, over $100 million, million. right? Yeah. So are you, where are you at? Are you scaling now? Are you hiring salespeople? Or are you still trying to sort of be careful about that? <laughs> Can you help us understand where yeah, you're at? Yeah, so we are, we are absolutely scaling. Mm -hmm. so, so we've built a product that is getting, that is deployed already in, in all these, uh, different verticals, like ranging from finance, to retail, to mm -hmm. social, to telecom, anybody who well, has exposure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exposure to the outside world, right? Yeah. Um, so product that can scale up yeah. to those demands, right? No, I mean, it's not easy to scale up to six billion requests a day. So, so we built a solid uh, platform. Uh, we, we've rolled out new products to complete the vision uh, in terms of uh, the API spider I spoke the about. Unified it. The unified API protection covers three aspects, uh, or all aspects of uh, API lifecycle. Uh, we are scaling our teams uh, from go-to-market motion. We brought in uh, recently our chief marketing officer, uh, our chief revenue officer as yeah. well. So, yeah. so, so putting all the new, the new pieces in place. Yeah. So you guys are like API observability on steroids. In it, a way, right? Because yeah, you're, you're doing the observability. Yes. You're getting the data analysis for risk you're having opportunities and recommendations around how to manage the stealthy attacks. Uh, the, from a full protection perspective. you're the API store. Yeah. So you guys are what we call best of breed. This is a trend we're seeing. Pick something that you're best in breed in. Absolutely. And nail it. So you're not like an observability platform for everything. No. You guys pick the Specific focus. Specific to APIs. Um, and, and so basically, your, you, you can have your existing tools in place, you will have your CDN, you will have your WAFs in place. So, uh, but for API protection, yeah. you need something specialized, and that's us. So Explain why I can't just rely on CDN infrastructure for, well, for this. So, so CDNs uh, are, are good for content delivery. Uh, they do your basic TLS and, and things like that. But APIs are all about your applications and business that you're exposing. Okay, so you, you have no context around that. So yeah, because this is, this is a super cloud vision that we're seeing of a structural change in the industry, a new thing that's happening in real time. Companies like yours are be keeping a focus and nailing it, and now the customer's going to assemble these services and yeah. capabilities. That's happening, and 
it's happening like right now. Structural change has happened, that's called the cloud, yes. cloud scale. Now this new change, best of breed. What are the gaps? Because I'm a customer, I got you for APIs, done. You take the complexity away, at scale, I trust you. Where are the other gaps in my architecture? What's new? Because I want to run cloud operations across all environments and across clouds when appropriate. Yeah. So I need to have a full op, where's the other gaps? Where are the other best of breed components that need to be developed? So it, it's, it's about uh, layered, the, the layers that you built, right? So, so first thing is you're bringing in different cloud envi environments that is your infrastructure, right? You, you, you either rely on the cloud provider for your security around that for rollouts and mm -hmm. operations, right? So then is going to be the next layer, which is about, is it serverless, is it Kubernetes, what about it? So you'll think about like a service mesh type environment. Ultimately, it's all about applications, right? Yeah. That's, that's, then you're going to roll out those applications and that's where we actually come in. Wherever you're rolling out your applications, we come in, baked into that environment, giving you that visibility and control protection awesome. around that. Well, great, great. First of all, APIs is the, is what cloud is based on. Yes. So, can't go wrong there. <laughs> it's not a, not a headwind for you guys. Absolutely. Great. What's, uh, give a quick plug for the company. What are you guys looking to do higher? What, uh, get customers, who's, uh, when, what, what's the pitch? So, um, like I, uh, I started earlier, uh, it, sequences um, around unified API protection, uh, protecting around the full life cycle of your APIs, ranging from uh, discovery all the way to, to testing. So, so uh, helping you throughout the, the life cycle of APIs. Uh, wherever those APIs are, in any cloud environment, uh, on-prem or in the cloud in your serverless environments. Uh, that's what sequences are. And you're about. doing billions of transactions. We're doing six billion requests every day, <laughs> which is, uh, which is a lot, uh, a lot. unheard for uh, a lot of companies here on the floor today. Mm, Trace, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate yeah. it. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on your success. Thank you. Sequence Security here on theCUBE at Reinforce. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. More coverage after this short break.